Hey, and welcome to uh, lecture 15 of E375. We're going to start diving deeper into our discussion of uncertainties and how we handle them. In particular, um, coming back to the kind of this diagram that we talked about at the beginning of the last set of lectures, um, we spent last week, last couple of weeks, talking about uh, how we fit models via maximum likelihood estimation how we estimate the uncertainties in the parameters associated with those best fit models using bootstrap. And then the, this week, we're gonna be talking about how we uh, estimate the uncertainty around the model itself and predictions made with that model using Monte Carlo methods in order to estimate uh, the overall predictive un uncertainty, uncertainty about the mean, and then summarizing those in, in terms of uh, commonly summarizing those into confidence intervals and predictive intervals. Okay, so the goal of uh, here is kind of to answer these questions of how confident are we in our predictions and how do we account for uncertainty? Those are kind of the motivating questions uh, for this section. Uh, that said, I'm gonna dive into uh, four specific focal areas that each have a very specific uh, concept that they're trying to express. <clears throat> and so the first is the idea of sensitivity analysis. So this is the question of asking, how does the change in some input into our model, some X, translate into a change in Y, our response variable? And that X could be literally a covariate X. It could be our parameters. Uh, it could be um, initial conditions, drivers, any of these sorts of things that go, any of the inputs into a model. How do they, when we change those various inputs, how does that change the outputs. Uh, this is closely related, but slightly different from the idea of uncertainty propagation. So how does uncertainty in X affect uncertainty in Y? So not just how change in X affects change in Y, how does the uncertainty in our inputs affect the uncertainty in our outputs, uh, which is very related to the question of how do we forecast our outputs with uncertainty? Then moving on to uncertainty analyses, which sources of uncertainty are the most important in our model? And that's often leads us uh, to this last question of optimal design, how do we best reduce the uncertainty in our forecast, which often really, really uh, requires understanding what the sources of uncertainty are in any particular model, if we wanted to try to reduce them optimally. So in this video, I'm gonna dive into the first of these concepts, which is sensitivity. So if we think about this idea of change in X translating to change in Y, um, we can think about this on the local scale, which means around some specific point, usually the mean value of our parameters, um, we can think of that sensitivity in what, analytically just as the derivative, because the derivative is pretty much a definition of how does a uh, change in x translate into a change in y. You know, if so, it would be you know dy dx, or in this case, d function d theta, which is any set of inputs or parameters. But we can also uh, mathematically uh, numerically, we can approximate that derivative using what are known as one at a time perturbations. So if I have some input into my model that I am interested in, and I want to understand how that affects the output, I can run it under the default values that's given by this largest dot here. And I can also run it uh, changing the parameter plus or minus some amount. Uh, here, uh, I have two different distributions of plus or minus one, two, and three standard deviations, or where these other dots are. And we can see in this case that the, the predictions coming out of this model are pretty sensitive to that choice of this specific parameter called specific leaf area, which uh, happens to basically tell you how thick a leaf is. Um, so it's the, uh, the amount of area per kilogram of leaf. And so if that's very low, the leaf is very thick. If that's very thin, the leaf is, if that's, if that's very big, the leaf is thin. And uh, we can see at the highest value that so the plant, you know, the model predicts that plants actually die. Cool. And so you could numerically, you know, calculate a slope at any of these sets of points to approximate that uh, derivative. In addition to local sensitivity analyses, which tells us about the sensitivity around a specific point, we may we often are estimate, interested in what's known as global sensitivity, which is how 
how does a model respond to in input over the whole uh, part of parameter space that the parameter is likely to, to vary? And so if we want to do a global sensitivity analysis, you know, if we think about it in one dimension, you know, uh, we just move a parameter up and down plus or minus some amount. And so if this middle value is our default, we might move it up one amount, down one amount, and we can calculate uh, that slope to get our local sensitivity. If we move into two dimensions, our local sensitivity was, you know, plus or minus in one direction, plus or minus in the other direction, but we were kind of missing these uh, off diagonal or these diagonal elements kind of, uh, what if we vary two things at the same time? Do they go up more or less than you would expect just adding them together? And also note that this is the simplest possible case where we're only checking two values. If you actually want to understand a model, you might say check 10 values in one direction, and then we move to two directions, then you have a 10 by 10 grid or a hundred places you need to check. You have a three parameters, uh, it's a 10 by 10 by 10 or a, you know, a thousand uh, you know, model runs you'd have to do to understand the three, dimen three dimensional interactions of those parameters. Um, and all of these, the, the red cross is kind of representing that one at a time uh, sensitivity analysis and what it's exploring versus the um, global sensitivity analysis, which is trying to fill that space. Now, the problem with global sensitivity analyses is that the amount of space that you need to explore as the dimension goes up, goes up very, very quickly. You know, it goes up to that power. So if I have, uh, if I just do plus or minus a value, you know, it goes three, nine, 27, it goes up three to the nth uh, number of evaluations. If I have 10 values, it goes up 10 to the nth. And so it goes up exponentially and uh, you know, very quickly, you know, if it goes up exponentially and I evaluate uh, 10 data points by, by the time I get to 10 parameters in my model, I have to do a, a billion, 10 billion uh, model runs. And that's, that's a lot of model runs. Uh, by contrast, if I'm doing just the one at a time, you know, then I'm just doing 21 model runs, but I'm getting a lot less information. Um, so because of this kind of idea of the curse of dimensionality, that exploring parameter space gets harder the bigger it is, there's a number of approximations to global sensitivity analyses that involve uh, kind of trade-offs between uh, how sparsely they sample. Uh, you know, so, so if something that samples intelligently but sparsely may be more computationally uh, efficient, something that samples parameter space more broadly, is going to be more costly, but it's going to give us a more extensive understanding. Uh, here come some different techniques. We're not going to dive into these uh, in detail. Uh, there is an optional reading up on Blackboard from the Saltelli book, just the first chapter. Um, it, it's a really great book. Um, it's a really accessible introduction to sensitivity analysis. Uh, but I'm going to focus on one form of sensitivity analysis, uh, which is our Monte Carlo sensitivity analysis. Um, so if you imagine that if I've, I've run a model, uh, you know, thousands of times where I'm sampling the parameters jointly, so not on a grid, I'm just drawing them randomly from their joint distribution. Um, and I, I run the model uh, thousands of times, then I can look at uh, what the model predicts here, I'm just visualizing, you know, in this case, this is an atmospheric transport model. We'll talk about it later in the semester. So here's predicting concentration of some pollutant as a function of wind speed. Here's predicting concentration as a function of air pressure. And this model has, you know, something like a dozen inputs into it. And so we can see that because a lot of other things are changing, you know, this, uh, this one factor there's a lot of other variability beyond this, each of these individual factors, but we can approximate the sensitivity by just running a regression line through that to get a slope and approximate the portion of the uncertainty attributable to each um, variable just by its partial R squared. Uh, one of the reasons I bring up Monte Carlo sensitivity analysis, and I'll come back to it later when we learn more about propagating uncertainty, is if we use Monte Carlo approaches uh, for uncertainty propagation, 
or if we're Bayesian and use MCMC methods, uh, which are kind of a, a Bayesian approach to model fitting that returns a probability distribution. So it kind of combines uh, numerical optimization and, and the idea of bootstrapping into one algorithm. Uh, so in either of those cases, uh, you kind of get this for free in some sense because you're uh, kind of already doing the model runs and it's just doing the post-processing to calculate the sensitivities. Cool. So that kind of gives a quick summary of, of sensitivity methods. I'm going to, in the next video, we're going to talk more about how we kind of build on this idea of sensitivity to think about how we propagate uncertainty. Thanks.